In today's video, we're gonna tell you some of the differences between the Travato K and G floor plans. And while they're very different, we're super passionate about each, but the one thing we agree on, Volta rocks. Volta does rock. What is going on YouTube? It's Kevin from 30 and a Wake Up. And Scott from Go Small Live Large. We are in Wallace, Idaho, which is the Northern Idaho Panhandle. If you haven't been to this area, check it out. Super cute historic mining town. What brings us here? We're doing a channel camp out. We've had some crazy people drive quite a ways to join us. This guy came in to crash my party. <laughs> I did. Turns out I foiled his efforts <laughs> in Butte. <laughs> I'm yeah, really glad we're here together today. It's really awesome. Yeah, he ended up parking right next to me in Butte. Actually, he was there first, but he left for the day. I pulled in thinking I was gonna camp there a couple days and then come down here and crash his subscriber party. But, you know, 20 minutes after I got there, the recognizable Lily pulls in next to me and he foiled my plans. I had to tell him what I was doing there. So <laughs> it's really cool. It's really cool. And for yeah. those of you that attended, you know, we're having a lot of fun. So thank you, Jane, Karen, Tracy and Matt. Yeah. A whole bunch of you come up for the day event. So just so glad to be with you, sir. It's really awesome. Yeah, this is really cool. Really I've cool. been watching his channel for a long time. Anytime I do something Volta related, I go to Scott's channel, like uh, changing my amps in my rig. I go to Scott's channel every single time to do that because I can never remember how to do it. So he's been invaluable for me uh, as a Travato owner, especially on the Volta side. But without further ado, we're gonna jump into our rigs and tell you why we chose the specific floor plan we chose and some of the differences in the floor plans. Let's go. All right, so welcome to my home. This is a kale floor plan. Thanks for stopping by my house. First of all, it's an honor to be here. Just yeah. in the van that I see on YouTube. It's always like, wow, right? <laughs> so I just had some questions, Kevin, on how you function in this space. You have a very different floor plan. It's very open. I know from watching your videos, you are kind of a studio apartment guy. Yeah. So you like the open space. Yeah. So even when I lived in New York City, when I lived in Washington, D.C., I preferred studio apartments. I like having everything in one space. When I went to look at the Travados, I saw the K and it instantly reminded me of the studio apartments I stayed in. Very open, a lot of windows you can see in all directions. And I kind of fell in love with that floor plan. Which kind of brings me to a few questions. So again, we're kind of comparing these so you can help understand how they're, you can live and work in one of these spaces because they're very different. My question, Kevin, is how do you work, dine, and entertain in this area? Yeah, so for work, there's a couple different ways I can work in this space. Obviously, you're using one of the fold-out trays right now. So I can work there. I can also work on this side. This is actually my preferred side. I prefer this side because my arm is up on this little ledge and it's just more comfortable for me to type. Um, a lot of people work in this spot, which is great as well. It's just more comfortable for me to work in this spot. Same with eating. Um, I usually eat on that one. This is where I work, that's where I eat. So I have like two distinct spots. So for me, it works perfect. I'm a solo traveler. I live in here alone. So this is really all I need. You mentioned um, entertaining. I haven't really entertained a whole lot of people in here to be completely honest with you. But if I did, I think it would be comfortable for two people. Um, when you start bringing more than two people in here, that's where the limitations of the K come in a little bit more than the G, which we'll talk about later. I mean, we're, we're talking about the front cab area, but there is in the back area, a place to set up a long table. So I could entertain more people. So yeah. this is kind of fascinating. So there's a, uh, another Travato K uh, YouTube channel, Chad and Paul. Yeah. So you could absolutely have two people working here um, very comfortably. Yeah, not for crash, sure. Not crashing into each other. Yeah. You got enough space to go out. So yeah. this actually f functions um, pretty well for working and dining in yeah. the scenario. Exactly. And just to kind of give you guys a size perspective, because I get this question a lot. I'm sure you do, Kevin. Um, you know, so so we're I'm like 160 pounds, 5'10". You're a little larger, but not giant. Yeah. But if, if you're a large person, keep this in mind. So this this really is, these seats are comfortable. These are the cab seats. You got the leather as well. Yeah. Um, if you're on the larger size, this still works very well. Yeah. 
All right, so we've checked out my front cab area. Now let's go over to the G and Scott's rig and check it out. So welcome to my front cab area. Vastly different than yours. Yeah, this is pretty awesome, actually. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I'm a little bit jealous. Like Now I'm sitting here. I'm like, oh, man, this would be so nice to just have this big table here, this big work area. I could have a drink. I could have some food and my laptop here. But to put it in perspective, so this is really a five feet by five feet space. So yeah. you're, you're really confined in this space. But to me, this is the magic of the G floor plan is you have four distinct living areas, four distinct rooms. And to mention the table being big, wait for it. It <laughs> yeah. gets bigger. That's pretty And awesome. to me, what's magic about this is if I'm doing my, my corporate job, I can have my computer, my iPad, my lunch, my coffee. If I'm having company, they can sit there. We can spin that seat around. I can sit where you're sitting right now. Um, and I can another, put another person here, maybe even two. So I get four to five people around this table and I have done that. We've had you know, cocktails and dinner and it's just the most amazing space and it collapses into a bed. So yeah. a four by six bed. So I can fit two people in the back, two people up front. So four people pretty easily, fairly uncomfortably, which is fine. Yeah. Stay a night or two, then get the heck out. Yeah. But I just love this space because it's, I, I work there where you're seated, yeah. um, which gives me a very different perspective. I work here a lot, probably 50% of the time. Yeah. And then where you're seated, I actually sit on that space uh, just to change up the view. It kind of depends on where the van is, is, um, is being positioned. And, and if I'm watching the TV, that there's, I got some uh, TV viewing there. Yeah. The other thing that's kind of weird, so let me see if I can do this without knocking everything off, is that I actually use this for a secret nap spot. So with my little pillow back here, I put my feet up on the on the uh, jump seat, and I put my little decorative pillow here, and I can have a 15 minute snooze. That's cool. <laughs> without um, taking down my bed, yeah. which if you climbed to bed, it, I'd be in there for an hour probably to have a, a nap. So to me, this is really a big deal for me and yeah. why this is such a game changer. Probably the re number one reason why I chose this floor plan. Yeah, it's definitely more, it definitely has a more living room feel, yeah. where mine is more of like hanging out at a diner at the countertop, where yours is more of like, hanging out in the booth seats in the diner. Yeah. The biggest difference is you can definitely entertain more people and this space is a lot more flexible where my space is two people either working or eating, not both at the same time. Right. So one of the big things you'll probably notice is I like to put stuff up on my walls, kind of like uh, tramp stamps of things I've collected um, <laughs> as I travel around. Since we're in vans, we can't get a lot of stuff. So I just have little little bits of stickers. And, and if I had a table I had to take down all the time, I wouldn't have this really cool, you know, memories uh, here. So it's each to his own. Yeah, but you know what? Let's go check out my kitchen real quick. Let's go. All right, so here we are in my kitchen. It's obviously a different setup than the G, which you'll see in a moment. The biggest difference I would say would be the size of the refrigerator and the sink's a little different. Yeah, and Kevin's such a gourmet chef. Maybe he doesn't care about this. I don't know. Uh, that's not true. If you've been watching my channel, you know I never cook. So actually this kitchen is completely wasted on me. So. <laughs> However, there's a couple things I really like about it from my perspective. Number one, this sink is humongous and it's uh, the, a real residential style faucet. So not the fold up goofy marine thing Ooh, with real water, uh, which isn't, which is really different than mine. I wish mine had this. Uh, the other thing I really like about this is the, the width of the countertop. There's no extension because of the bed, but because the width is so uh, wide with a permanent um, you know, thing at the end, you can actually have a Keurig set up and mounted to your, um, to your galley, which is really great. I've got to put my coffee stuff away every day. So this is really cool. Yeah. Uh, the downside for me is, is the fridge uh, space. Um, you'll see mine is quite a bit bigger. And you have a convection microwave, which means you can kind of bake in it, right? Yeah, so it's a, again, it's wasted on me, but if I wanted to bake cookies or cook a turkey, a small turkey, I guess I could do that. I'm actually going to use that convection oven. I mean, it's such a valuable resource to have in a small van like yeah. this to be able to cook. So I should try it. One of the things I don't like about my kitchen, personally, this rig has so much electric power. We've talked about Volta over and over again. It's truly amazing. I don't like that the stovetop is gas. That's convenient for a lot of people in rigs that don't have a lot of power. But in a rig like this, I would love to have an induction stove so my counter was a little bit more flat. It, just, it would make more sense to me, especially as someone that doesn't cook very often. 
Um, I would prefer an induction stove here rather than a, a gas stove, personally. And I like propane because cooking on gas is something I've done for well over 15 years. It's gas cooking, so for me it works better. But so, you want to see my galley? Yeah, let's go check out your galley. All right, so welcome to my galley. Um, I love this galley so much. It's really kind of the second room in my floor plan. And when I say room, it's really a defined living space. Um, yeah. So it's got the same propane cooktop as Kevin, a very different sink. I prefer yours, Yeah. Uh, but a lot of storage here up and down. Um, that's kind of similar, but what's really vastly different is the fridge. Um, I can fit, are you ready for this? Half a gallon, two of them, in my fridge door. <laughs> so that's pretty special. Yeah. Um, Actually, I think my fridge is the same size as your top fridge. That's, it, that's an interesting comparison. Yeah, and then my microwave is up uh, at an accessible point, which is much better, I yeah, think, I, from I being do. underneath. Yeah, I do like it being up there, actually. And a hot tip, if you're not aware of this, um, this is great for storing crackers and really bulky <laughs> items as you put them in your microwave. So pro tip there for you. So yeah. I just love this. I have a galley window. His has got the big window, but yeah. um, I just find this to be really enjoyable space to cook. And it's wide, right? Uh, yeah. Some of the other... Uh, no, it, it, it is pretty wide compared to like the Heimer Active. Is, which was super narrow. Yeah, the Heimer Active was super narrow. Yeah. Um, like two people could actually fit through this space. You could go around one person where... The Heimer Active in a similar floor plan, you would have to do like a band live shuffle. Type yeah, of thing. it was like. Yeah. So, one last thing to point out here is it's kind of hidden as a wardrobe. So, I'm kind of crazy. I actually put clothes in a wardrobe. <laughs> yeah. A lot of folks kind of mod this out, put shelves for, for food and pantry items. And I shop for like three to five days of food a week, get a lot of fresh stuff. Yeah. So, canned corn and stuff like that, not going to happen for me. You know, you, you know, we, we learn and we share, you decide what's best for you. That's kind of the way we roll. So. So I noticed you do a lot of grilling outside. How much do you actually use your kitchen? Do you use this mm. cooktop? Do you use actually use the microwave? Like how much do you actually use this kitchen? That's a great question. I, to your point earlier, I don't really use this propane stove very often. Yeah. Um, I use my grill a lot. So what I do is I grill a few days worth of food. So I'm putting up, you know, three or four hamburger patties, a bunch of sausages, you know, chicken breast, whatever. And then I grill it and then I put it into my, um, into plastic bags like this. This is a steak from last night. And uh, then I warm it up in the microwave and it works really well. This is, it's nice to have, but it's kind of a hassle. I like cooking on gas, so it's okay for me if I'm going to cook, but I grill forward and heat in the microwave. What is this thing right here on the cabinet? So this is, uh, thanks for bringing it up. So this was found through, um, I was visiting the uh, President Nixon Presidential Library in California. And Nixon was actually pretty instrumental in, in Apollo 11. He carried that through and was like the last guy to really push the Apollo program. What you're looking at is the actual Apollo 11 flight plan. This is a NASA document that's been scanned and I bought it at the gift shop as part of that Apollo 11 um, oh, that's cool. uh, yeah, exhibit. And what it shows here is, is the, so the launch cool. out of Florida over to the moon, landing on the moon, and then the reverse trip getting off the moon and then back, back, to, uh, back to Florida. So, that's and it really fit cool. perfectly. You think I measured this. It was a total van miracle. Van life miracles happen all the time. It fit here perfectly. And the, all I had to do is... So this is kind of funny. I had to cut the button for the um, <laughs> for the for the knob, uh, but I did it late at night and I couldn't really read what it was. And actually cut the knob on the top, and then had to realize the next day I had to oh, reverse no. it. So, uh, but thanks for asking. I was really proud. And a lot of you guys have asked me about this, so uh, yeah. thanks for bringing it up. That's really cool. So what do you say we go check out my bedroom? Let's go. Okay, so welcome to my bedroom here in the K. The biggest reason I chose this floor plan is for the openness of the floor plan, like I mentioned before. Also, I wanted the ability to have a couple beds because I think I'm going to take my nieces and nephews out. And so that was part of the reasoning behind getting this floor plan. Yeah, it's, again, probably the biggest difference in the floor plans is, is the bedroom. This has very distinct two, two twin beds. It can make up to a larger bed with a cushion in the middle, right? Yeah, it can make it into a queen. I've never done it. Most people I've talked to never do it. It's kind of a pain. Uh, it comes across here and it ends right here. So there's a little notch so you can climb out and use the bathroom, but it's really inconvenient. You'd have to make it and take it down every single day. I haven't met anybody that has a K that does that. Yeah. I don't know if you have. No. I mean, why not just get a G if that's what you're gonna do? Right. So. And then the other thing, Kevin, it's you're kind of a, you're taller than I am. Um, yeah. So there's beds. This one's longer than this one. Why choose this one? Yeah. Versus this. Yeah. So this one felt more comfortable for me. I'm 5'11". I actually fit pretty well uh, into this spot. 
And the biggest reason was because usually when I park my rig, I put the door side versus wherever the view isn't. And I put this side on the view side because it's covered with windows. So I like being able to wake up in the morning, open this window, look out and see the Tetons, do a little work, answer some YouTube comments, um, and have a beautiful view. So that's why I personally prefer sleeping on this side in the smaller bed. That makes total sense. Yeah. Um, I love that element. Um, the other thing that's really different to me is um, my feet dangle. So <laughs> I, I don't know. Is that a problem if you're working? How do you work? Uh, do you work from this or do you work up front like we talked about earlier? Yeah, I, I work in both spots. Um, in the mornings, you'll find me laying in bed with a little uh, tray over my legs working. And so I'm laying in bed, so I don't have this issue. But it is kind of weird um, that your feet <laughs> dangle here. Some people will set up the table here. There's a table that goes up here and eat here, but it's weird. You feel like you're sitting at the kitty table because your feet don't touch the ground. <laughs> it's actually not a great couch or place to sit because of how awkward you feel. Yeah, it's too deep uh, to be leaning back and it's... Yeah, anytime I've ever had anybody here sitting here, it's always a weird, like, it's just weird. It feels weird. Maybe it doesn't look weird, but it feels weird when yeah, you're sitting trying to have a conversation yeah. with somebody. Yeah, totally so, good. Yeah. And maybe the last thing I'd like to point out is a lot of you are really big into TV. Um, a lot of you aren't as well. Uh, I'm not a TV guy, uh, but you have a really nice position for TV if you want to watch TV yeah. in bed, watch a movie, um, maybe even use a computer monitor somehow. I don't know. Um, do, you, do you find that to be beneficial? I don't use the TV very much either, so I'm thinking about actually taking it out or converting it to a computer monitor. I mean, it, it is great. It rotates around, so you can look at it from both uh, living spaces. If you watch TV, it's probably great. I mean, it does turn it into like an entertainment area if I yeah, ever chose sure. to use it for that. Yeah. So one of the other big things that I noticed right away around my bedroom versus your bedroom is that in the G floor plan, I'm kind of tucked in the back here. Um, you were kind of exposed, so you have to kind of close up a lot of windows to get the same amount of privacy that I do with really maybe two blinds. Yeah, definitely. I mean, to me, the advantage of the K is the panoramic views you have, but it also is one of the disadvantages. Because at night, when you have your lights on, everybody can see into your vehicle, no matter what side they're on. So a lot of times you have to close everything up in order to have any kind of privacy. I close everything up every night kind of how it is right now, and it's mostly for privacy. So I lose out on being able to watch the night sky and things like uh, you can do street in camping. the gene. Yeah. yeah, so I street camp a lot, and even like harvest host. To me, it's the magic is, is being in the environment and not closing stuff up, but I think I would close things up in this just to have the privacy. So that's, yeah. that's a big difference too. Yeah. You wanna see my bedroom? Yeah, let's okay, do it. Let's go. So welcome to the third room in my rig and it's a dual purpose room like things are in vans. I'm actually in the hallway and in the garage storage. So one of the beauties of this, uh, I think floor plan versus Kevin is I have a litter box and a grill that I can park back here plus my gym bag. So even with the bed down, which goes right here, I'll show you that in a second. Uh, this is a tremendous amount of space that is super flexible and very functional. Um, get a lot of uh, you know questions about the bed and clearly your twin beds are more comfy for two people if you want to be in separate beds. Uh, so this is about a four by six bed and it literally just lays down like this to expose this. So again, if you're kind of on the smaller side and don't move around a lot at night, it's going to work great. If you're on the larger size and or move around a lot at night, what you can do is make up the front bed. It only takes a few minutes. It's really pretty easy. Um, but this is just, and then it folds back up like this. Uh, point out some things. So this is a uh, iPad or a, a, like for books and iPads, things like that, which is really nice. Just love that. And Kevin talked about his window. Um, here you can lay in bed and look out the window as well. And what I can do that Kevin might have a little challenge with is if I don't cover these back windows up, I can actually watch the moon rise and set. I did it just the other night, the last two nights, really. And it's just the most magic experience to watch these, you know, the astrological stuff happen at night or daytime. Sunsets, right? So that's how it is. And it's lifted up like that. And then your, your bed is, is done. So it's a very different approach, very different approach to a bed system. But um, again, I can sleep four people in this, two for sure very comfortably, maybe even two back here very comfortably. So Kevin, let's go check out your bathroom. Okay, so welcome to my bathroom. When I first looked at the K floor plan, this was actually one of the things I didn't really like about it. I didn't like the idea of opening my back doors and people being able to see my toilet. But to be honest with you, it's grown on me. I 
pulled this van to the back of the Grand Canyon and done my business on here with the best view in the world. So that was kind of cool. What do you think about the K <laughs> bathroom? Well, my channel, you know, we like to talk about pottying. So there's a potty <laughs> on the Grand Canyon. That's awesome. Uh, you know, this is, to me is a problem uh, with the G or the K is I would not do this. I would never open up my doors. I open up my doors all the time for ventilation. Um, and I use it as a, as a grill rack, which you'll see. So this just doesn't work for me. Yeah. Um, and you and the shower situation is not awesome in here, in my opinion, because it's you're really constricted by having a shower curtain. Yeah. How do you deal yeah. with that? So because there is a shower in here and also an armoire, uh, basically a closet in here, you have to put up a shower curtain with these little snaps. And it's actually really inconvenient and kind of a pain in the rear end. So I usually just hook the shower curtain up to each door with a magnet and I shower outside so I don't have to deal with the mess that the shower makes in here. And you're more nature than I am because I would not be doing that. Um, so again, I just like my shower. Took a shower in there this morning. Um, I don't even have a shower curtain. It came with one, got rid of it. So yeah. it's very different perspectives on the shower. It definitely, I think one of the drawbacks is this shower is not going to be functional for a lot of people. A lot of my friends have the K and they make it work. Our friend Jane showered this morning. I didn't. I don't like messing with it. So I went over to the campground shower and took a shower. And Scott was able to shower in his rig, no issue. Two days so, in a row. Yeah. So for me, I kind of wish the shower was a little bit more well thought out. And the other thing I found kind of interesting is your utility chest here, utility yeah. cabinet. I actually have a cabinet. You'll see that in a second. But what's going on here? And you're very organized, by the way. You <laughs> yeah. come from the military or something? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this is like my OCD military nature. Um, I actually really like this. I stole this idea from a couple other people on the Travato Wannabe and Owners website, uh, Facebook page. Uh, I like the idea of being able to just grab what I need to empty my tanks or fill my tanks up. Uh, it's really convenient. And if the stuff's all wet, I don't even really have to worry about it because this is all a shower pan down here. So. Uh, it's really convenient. All right, you want to yeah. yeah, see think, my bathroom? I think we should check out your bathroom. Welcome to my bathroom. So this is one of the things that just really appealed to me about this floor plan. First of all, I'm wearing cowboy boots, and I still have like two inches of height um, above me. So showering in here is so much fun. I have a shower wand, and it just pointed at me like this. And what's great about this is I can splash and, and spritz and just turn about like you would in a normal shower. Um, it's kind of not it's narrow this way but it's really wide this way and clearly the towel wouldn't be here but it's just a really fun effective way to shower I showered here this morning um, but it's also got the toilet it's similar to Kevin's it's a you know traditional tank and then I got medicine chest up here storage for that kind of stuff and it has a permanent sink which is really great I use this sink all the time versus the galley sink for quick hand washing for you know, brushing teeth flossing teeth stuff like that I do all that in my rig I don't do that in the shower houses but this is just one of the biggest class B bath bathrooms that you can really get. And this door is super functional. And what's also neat is when I'm done showering, I actually use this, like you had mentioned, is just to wash everything down, um, which really is, is just a great way to keep your bathroom clean. All right, so that was pretty awesome. We're gonna go jump back into my rig and answer some common van life questions from a G and a K perspective. The first question is, we're both YouTubers. How did you get into YouTubing? First, I was a YouTube consumer because I, when I was researching my van, I spent over 300 hours. A lot of that's on YouTube, probably at least th two thirds of that is just watching all types of YouTube videos. And it became apparent I could live in one, but if I could make money doing it, then I had a you know a combination there that was pretty undeniable. So yeah. while not getting rich on YouTube, it's really a labor of love to be honest, because I just love to learn about this and then share, and then you kind of decide what's best for you. So it was, it was um, it's a lot of work, but I learned so much from those doing it years before me, and then hopefully just helping some of those that are in the position I was in you know three years ago. Yeah. I mean, I definitely was watching your channel, watching Fit RV, um, watching a couple of the other Travato channels, Van Trekking, Chad and Paul, the Russos, Ginger William, Walkabout, yeah, Ginger the Russos. Walkabout. Um, so I watched a lot of YouTube as well, um, preparing to go into van life. I was already a YouTuber before. I was an international travel vlogger. To be honest with you, with COVID, it was a natural transition from traveling internationally to moving into a van and traveling and exploring the US and hopefully Canada and Mexico at some point. 
So let me ask this question. I know you get it a lot. Um, we've talked about the floor plans today. Yeah. So somebody is buying their first RV or they have one, like one of the bigger ones and they want to get into a smaller van. What advice would you give somebody to check out these vans carefully and spend time and decide which floor plan works for them? Yeah, uh, I think you have to go to the RV dealer and you have to hang out in the van. And not for five minutes, hang out in the van for 30 minutes. Have the salesman show you the systems, how to operate them. Go stand in the shower and pretend you're taking a shower. Um, stand in there for five minutes. With the curtain up. Yeah, with the curtain up, like for the case, set up the curtain. See if it's something you would enjoy doing. I don't enjoy doing it, um, so I don't do it. But that I think that's one thing you need to do. Lay on the bed. Um, really think about what your needs are, how you live your life, and what would work for you. And I'd agree with all that. It's, it's um, practice making a meal. Practice sleeping, practice working, practice running out the, the awning, uh, practice using the, the, you know, the toilet and stuff, pretend of course, <laughs> but yeah. uh, work the work the shades, work the air conditioner. Don't let your salesperson do all the stuff. Have them show you how to do it and you actually do the work. Yeah. To me, that's better salesmanship, number one, but help you give a really good understanding of what the systems are and how you would use them and then just think through how you spend a lot of time in here with those systems. Yeah, and I think we're both single and live in our RVs. So for us, this is actually a lot of space. I think it is. So I think if you're a couple too, you need to go and see the van together and move around in the van to really see if it's something that fits your lifestyle. I have a lot of couple friends that have went through three or four different vans trying to find something that works for them. So I think you definitely should go in uh, if you're a couple together, not just one of you go, both of you need to go and figure out yeah. um, if you're going to be able to... Um, cohabitate in that vehicle yeah so. if you're not getting along in 2500 square feet you're gonna have a heck of a time in 60 square feet let me tell yeah, you yeah definitely <laughs> so all right so the next question that i get from my viewers a lot is what has been your most favorite place you've visited and i get that a lot too and that's really hard yeah i'll be honest with you it's because every place i go is probably my favorite spot <laughs> place at that time. Yeah, like um, Wallace right now is amazing. Wallace is amazing. Uh, Butte was amazing. Um, yeah. But I really kind of fell in love with the Southwest, you know, Texas, Arizona. Yeah. My inner cowboy coming out late in life. I don't know. Yeah. But, and here's a tip with vans. If you don't like where you are, you simply move. Yeah. If you make a reservation in a big rig and you're there for a week and you really don't like it, you may or may not get a refund. You got to unconnect everything. The van, you just literally drive away. Yeah. So it's really nice. Yeah, I think that's one of the cool things about the van, just to piggyback on that, is it's easy to get reservations because you can park in smaller spots, and those are usually available more often because the fifth wheels and the big RVs, the Cs and the As, take up a majority of the yeah. RV park. So the smaller spots are often left open. Uh, and just to go back to the original question, favorite spot we've been, for me, it was Grand Teton. I found some amazing boondocking spots in Grand Teton. So, so far, uh, Grand Teton is the one to beat. So I got a question for you. So yeah. you and I camp very differently. You yeah. boondock out in the in the wilderness. I tried a few times. I'll continue <laughs> to try it, but I'm more of an urban camper. Yeah. Um, and Harvest Host is part of that urban camping, I would say. Um, how did you end up doing the, your style uh, yeah. of camping? So just to piggyback on the Harvest Host thing, I love Harvest Host. And that's my go-to in-between stops. So a lot of people like to stay at Walmarts, Cracker Barrels. For me, pay $60 a year and you can camp at an, on an amazing farm, at a really cool brewery, at an awesome winery, at a, at a, a beautiful golf course or a museum. museum. So I use Harvest Host as part of my kind of free camping. It's not necessarily free because you have a yearly expense, but it's as close to free as you can get. Uh, and, it, and it's great. So I use Harvest Toast when I'm going from spot to spot. So for me, I thought I would be more like Scott and would be staying at campgrounds and trying to boondock in cities. And I met a bunch of escapers and people in the Winnie B organization and most of them boondock. And so I kind of got to boondock on training wheels. The first place I went was Salida, Colorado, and there's a ton of BLM land out there. And I was able to camp for 10 days on this BLM land with amazing views of Mount Chavano, which I ended up hiking. And I fell in love with it. I, I couldn't believe that you could go to these amazing spots and camp 
and you didn't have to pay anybody for them. So then I started researching um, other spots to camp like that for free, national forests, and I just started finding all these really cool spots. And I kind of fell in love with the adventure that goes along with finding an awesome spot. <laughs> That's why I camped the way I do. So what, what made you choose the type of urban free camping and campground type camping? For me, it's, I guess I'm just a city boy at heart. I just, yeah. I, I feel the few times I've been out on Bureau of Land Management, BLM land, um, I was by myself and it just was super isolating to me. Yeah. Um, maybe had a couple of van cool people like you to come. I might feel better, but I just felt yeah. super isolated. I just like the the conveniences of an urban camping environment. Um, I street camp, you know, one or two nights a week where I'm literally on the street, and a van allows you to do that. Um, it's a whole other story how to do that correctly, but I just like to have the services available. I like to work outside of my van, so I roll into some place and I work in. I just did in Butte, Montana, this amazing old historic hotel. I worked in there for a few hours. Yeah, air conditioning or heat, free <laughs> Wi-Fi. And maybe yeah. you have to buy a Coca-Cola or a cup of coffee and you get set up and it gets you out of the van. So I just like, yeah. it takes me to, like a little bit like Harvest Host. By going to a cool place, a little town, I'm now experiencing those little locales yeah. as part of my normal work and living day. And to me, that's really cool. And yeah. that just builds up my my you know, repertoire of travel experiences. Yeah. You know, sitting next to a cool lake, I could do it for a couple of days, but I'd probably get bored yeah. to be honest. With you. <laughs> I just can't believe you're like you're like Chad and Paul, man. You're just out there in the elements, yeah, scaring fish. It's yeah. Uh... <laughs> yeah, I do. I do take baths in streams and lakes, which I got the idea from Chad and Paul. I know they didn't invent it, but I do like doing that. <laughs> if you could change one thing about your van, what would it be? If I change one thing about my van, it would be I would have less storage for more tank capacity. Yeah, I would almost want to steal that answer, but I recently toured a van at Off Highway Vans, and they had a stainless steel shower. Mm. So what I would change about my van is I would make that entire back area stainless steel. I would take out the closet back there and just make that entire thing a shower, uh, put a better door on it, and then I could have a shower experience more like your shower experience. Um, I would like bigger tanks though, because at, with 13 gallons of fresh water, you can't take too many showers. <laughs> so I'd probably want a bigger tank uh, as well. So the final question is, what advice do you have for someone wanting to get into this lifestyle? That is a great question. I think to consider this lifestyle, you have to really want to do it, number one. You gotta be willing to do the change. Yeah. And you gotta reset your expectations. Yeah. Um, I was ready to move out of a big house. I was ready to get rid of a bunch of stuff. I wanted the freedom to go wherever I wanted. Um, if you are planning to park this someplace and be in the sunlight and think that AC unit is going to cool us to 70 degrees when it's 90 outside, you're going to be up for an unpleasant experience. So I think it's just watch YouTube, watch people like that that are actually doing it. That's yeah. key. And, and make a list of what kind of place would you go, st spend time in the rigs and really think through how you want to live, whether it's full-time or part-time or just long weekends, but really think through your experience because I promise you, you're gonna reset your expectations. One of my favorite things with the ginger walkabout, she had three skillets. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. No reason to have three skillets. <laughs> I have one. I have one. I have one and it's never been used. It's never been <laughs> used. So I think it's just, my advice was just th reset your expectations. You're moving into a van. It's not a house. You will not have endless hot water. Yeah. You will not have endless Wi-Fi. You will have the, the what you won't have is actually pretty big and can be intimidating. Yeah. If you don't reset your expectations. Yeah. The only thing I would add is maybe go rent an RV and figure out what kind of camper you want. You may think you want a van and then realize that you really want a class A RV. The last thing you want to do is drop a hundred grand on a vehicle and then realize it's not for you. And that happens a lot. Mm -hmm. So I would go out and rent a couple of different RVs and then also try out the different kinds of camping. Try out what Scott does, free camping in cities, staying at campsites, try what I do, going to BLM land and see what you like. You may think the romantic idea of being out in the middle of nowhere is something you would enjoy, but then you get out there and you're swarmed by bugs and bears are tramping through your camp and you go, okay, maybe I don't want this and I wanna be plugged in and have AC 24 seven. So I, I think figuring out what kind of camper you're gonna be and actually going out and doing it before you buy the van is a good idea because then you can buy a van that meets 
your expectations. Yeah, like a like we just did the video with uh, Tab on the Travato versus Revel. He had a Travato. Yeah. It didn't really meet his needs. He wanted the rugged four by four in particular and the, and the ground clearance. Yeah. Um, so that's why he shifted. So that's great. Really great advice is to rent the rig, um, and maybe you don't have to box yourself into one type of camper. Yeah. Do what we do, which is you kind of do it all, which is the beauty of these types of vans. If you have a big Class A palace on four wheels, well, probably eight wheels, you are putting yourself in a, in a box where you have to drag a car behind you, and now you do the car thing around the little town, but you're always going back to the Class A parking yeah. spot that night. So, yeah. I guess it's just one of the beauties of the van. But uh, Yeah, yeah, definitely. Kevin, this has been so awesome. I am so, <laughs> so glad you came to Butte to come crash my Wallace party. Yeah. And thanks for being a, a subscriber and, yeah. and and just welcome to the van life, man. You're pretty new at this. I've been a yeah. little while longer. Yeah. Um, but you're so, he's the real deal, by the way. <laughs> he's um he's he's pretty cool. So just uh, yeah. thanks. Uh, yeah. Oh, I wanna stay right here.